Hello everybody, SpiderPilot747 here, and uh, today we're going to be doing a little walkthrough of Synfig Studio. Now, Synfig Studio is basically just uh, an animation software, which is available on Linux, Windows, etc. So we're going to start off with our little uh, canvas here, and we're going to import one of our pre-made images. So I've got three pre-made images. I'm going to import uh, the body first, and it's a little big as we can see, so we're going to have to scale that down. Uh, we use the little uh, orange thing up in the corner here if we want to make it stay in correct proportions. Now we can see here it's a little dark. And uh, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to change the gamma value just to make it more visually appealing. However, we'll find at the end of this episode that it's actually displaying the correct color. It's just not displaying right on my screen. So we'll end up putting the gamma back to 1. So you don't have to modify the gamma, but I'm just doing it here to make it look uh, better as I edit. So we've imported both of the arm, or we've imported the uh, left arm, and uh, basically we've done the same gamma thing to that, we've scaled it down. One thing we've had to do additionally is uh, we go into here, go to the scale. You'll see that the scale is exactly the same as the body. That's so that the arms keep the same proportion as the body because that's how they were drawn so uh, scaled them down we've set the origins basically to these uh, arm joints here so that if we rotate them about the origin we can uh, get something like this now you don't have to do that it's just something that I've done because later on what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting a rotation modifier anyway and we're going to be positioning the position modifier joint ourselves so you don't necessarily have to set the origin. And in fact, setting the origin is a difficult thing to do. Now what I've done here, I've duplicated the arms uh, because we're going to be using the same image for the left and right arms. But what we're going to do is we're going to mirror them. So we're going to go into the scale here and we're going to set it to negative uh, in the X direction, which will mirror it and give us the mirror image. And then we're just going to set these up the same way that we set up the left arms. All right, so we've got our arms set up now. So as you can see here, we've set up our rotation modifier for the left arm so far. And it just gives you an idea of kind of what it looks like. We can move our arm around. It's uh, mostly intact. We have our second rotation modifier to move the forearm. So you can think of it a little bit like a tree where the uh, upper arm is the root and the forearm is one of the branches and you might have additional branches to move fingers, etc. Uh, he's kind of inverted his elbow there. But yeah, this is uh, we're going to show you how to set this kind of thing up on the right arm. So we'll get straight into that. So here we have our two images that we've imported. We're grouping them, and we're just going to call that our arm for right arm. And uh, that's opposed to left arm. So we got the two images inside. What we're going to do is we're going to group the first one, and that's going to be our forearm. And uh, as you can see, in our previous one, we have some rotation transformations applied. So in our first arm here, we're adding a new layer, transform, rotate. And we're going to move this green piece. The green is basically the uh, point that it's rotating about. We're moving that so that we can get the correct position to pivot the elbow. So it's pretty close here, and you might have to do a little bit of fine-tuning to make everything look correct. So now we're going to do the full arm. So we're going to, again, add transformation, rotate. And this is going to be for the whole arm. So we're going to be placing that little green thing right at the elbow, or right at the shoulder. And... When we rotate that, it should rotate everything underneath of it within this group. So it'll rotate the forearm, it'll rotate the arm, the upper arm, I guess you would call it. So when we rotate this, we see the whole arm rotates. Wow, he has a bit of an impacted shoulder there, so we'll have to adjust the center of rotation slightly. And uh, what I end up doing here the elbow or the shoulders aren't quite the right shape. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to modify this in GIMP. 
So as you can see here, we're modifying the shape of the shoulder to match the opposite side. I'm just going to copy that, bring it over to the other side and line it up. So that just makes things a little bit easier in terms of trying to get the whole thing working. So that looks, that looks reasonable. So yeah, we have to close and reopen so it'll reload the image. But aside from that, in terms of, uh, in terms of the file integrity, it's pretty armless. So nothing to worry about, eh, except for perhaps bad puns. So now we can see both arms. We can move them. Move the forearm there. We're going to move the other forearm over here. And oh look, our friendly character has some uh, crossed arms. You can of course rotate the upper arms too if you think that looks a little unnatural. I don't do that here. But as you can see, we have our character in these kind of rigged up so that we can move the arms as we need to, which is relatively useful. So what we're going to do now, we're going to start doing the background. So we're going to have our character standing inside of an elevator. The inside of the elevator is going to be modeled by this rectangle. And to change the color of the rectangle, we'll go to the uh, bottom left of the screen here to change the color. And for the full background, that one will have to be, again, you'll, you'll have to move the layers around as well. So I'll rename this one and then I'll move it down. So the thing at the bottom of the list is going to be at the very back. I'll make this blue. All right. So now we're creating an outline for the elevator doors because our character's in an elevator, remember? So we have one door covering up the half of the elevator. We've used an outline on the uh, on the rectangle. We've applied an outline here. The problem with the outline is that it doesn't change its shape as a rectangle would. So you have to treat it as being a polygon instead of a rectangle. You can't just alter the size of it. So we're grouping these as being an elevator door. Modify the fill color to be gray. Duplicate it so that we have two elevator doors and we're just going to move the whole group over to the right. So we have our elevator doors, but if they open, they're going to be opening in front of our background and it's not going to look quite right. So what we're going to do to hide the elevator doors is we're going to create a cover just over top of the background here. We're going to create uh, two rectangles and the two rectangles are just going to be on the top layer and they're going to be used just to mask they're going to be used as a mask for the uh for the elevator doors right so we're copying the html color code that way we know that these are the same color they won't stand out or be noticeable in any way whatsoever so there we go right so we have this fun little tool here for previewing which basically renders the the video at a lower quality, lower resolution, and allows you to get a quick idea of the timing. And we're getting right into the animation part of this now, so this will be of use to us. So with regards to the animation section, down at the bottom here, we have all these different tools for how to change between one position and another position. And we can enable an editing mode, which allows us to create motion. Uh, we're going to be using an ease in, ease out, because you want kind of smooth, non-jerky motions. And in the bottom here, we have our keyframes. We have our uh, timing window, which tells us information about when stuff is happening. So we're going to have nothing happen for about the first one and a half seconds, and we're going to insert a keyframe. So nothing at all moves. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to use an excess of keyframes. Uh, you should really only use keyframes when you know absolutely where everything is at a given point in time. So we're going to move these doors now. As you can see, they've moved over that. Uh, I think that's a one second period. Well, what we're doing here is we're just having the elevator doors open. It's a simple animation, kind of like uh, parting to show the image that they are masking. In this case, they were masking our friendly little character. So, as you can see, 
we have these two little E's symbols. If we go into our properties, we can see that that corresponds to our geometry. So if I wanted to modify my amount, in other words, uh, cause one of the doors to fade out, I could modify that amount here. And as you can see, it creates a fade between the last keyframe and the current keyframe. So the door would kind of fade out, but I don't really want that. Uh, what you can do to get rid of these if they're still sticking around is uh, just remove. And those will most likely appear whenever you have a transformation outside of a keyframe because it'll be relative to the last keyframe. Now let's preview this and see if our timing is good. So it's rendering and we'll just do a quick playthrough. And that timing looks relatively good. So that's what the previewer is useful for. It gives you an idea of how far away this is, how far away these two points are in time, and it's not so abstract. So now we're going to have our character do a little motion. So we'll have another keyframe. Again, don't do as many keyframes as I'm doing. It's unnecessary. But we're going to have our character wave to the audience. So we'll move his arm up. Uh, and he has an impacted shoulder. And, uh, that's a little bit high. I don't want his hand to be going over top of the elevator because it gives the illusion that he's outside of it. So we're actually going to move this down a little bit so that he's inside the elevator still. And we can move his arm around. There we go. Let's save it. Let's do another quick preview. See if he's waving fast enough or if he's waving too slow. The door's open, and that's a good speed, I think. Uh, but he keeps his arm up at the end there, which looks a little strange, and the elevator doors stay open. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to continue this on to the natural end of the scene. So we have this, uh, in here we can go to time, and we can extend the amount of time. We're at about 120 frames, so let's do 240. That'll give us 10 seconds of video. And as we can see, that's doubled the amount of time that we have. So I'm actually uh, just going to do the rest of this. You've pretty much seen how the animation works. And uh, we'll come back when I have completed it. All right. So here's what we have. The door's open. Character waves hello. And the arm goes back. Doors close. And all is well. And this is basically on a loop. So it can go for infinity if we want it to. Not that you'd want to look at this character for infinity. So that's a very basic animation in Synfig Studio using kind of a cutout technique. And when we're ready to render, we click the render button up there. Make sure you do not save it as a PNG unless you absolutely are certain that you want it as a PNG because that will give you about a million different image files. I'm going to be using FFmpeg here uh, because FFmpeg will actually produce a video file, which is probably more what you're interested in. All the timing and everything looks good, so I will go up and render. And there's no real way of knowing whether or not it is still rendering. So I've opened up a task manager here. And we can just kind of see whether it's still open. Once FFmpeg closes, that means it's finished rendering. Now, this is what it looks like when we didn't reset the gamma. We're going to go back, fix all the gamma values, which is going to take us a little while to complete. And after we did a little bit of tweaking on the gamma values, this is what we this is our finished product. So we have our character, our character waves high, crosses our arms, and it's good. So thank you for watching. I'm Spider Pilot 747 uh, If you like this tutorial, then leave a like, and feel free to subscribe to the channel for more. Good day.